Lupita, ¿cómo está? hijo, ¿cómo estás? Bien, hijo. Ah, ese es. La china chifle. Hi everybody. Um, we're waiting for uh, everybody else to get. I start honestly. Recording. All right. Okay. So, so far. 
far that's what we have okay so i let me make sure we bring it up let me get my textbook okay. Is there in the page and then the, the um, module number three? Is on page now? One twenty nine. One twenty nine. Uh huh. Vamos a empezar ahí. No. Um. Yeah. Oh, this is another one. What is it? Oh, I think we left off on the... Um, let's put the uh, projected monthly sales. Put it the total here. So we did... um. Left off. So we're on, on page 130 of the uh, module on number number three. Page 130, EX 130. No 129? No, 130. Oh. Oh, yeah. So we already put that. We typed the numbers 78, 75%. Yeah. Oh, look at for this section, we're gonna, we already sketched the thing, uh, a date stamp that they want us to use, a date stamp. Uh, if it's in business, a report often is meaningless without a date stamp. For example, if I print out in a worksheet of this module, where the student to the company announced analysts, the date stamp will uh, show when the six month projection were made. Well, what type of period the report a simple way to create is use the now function to enter the system. That's why you're um, they call in the worksheet. The now function is one of 24 date and time functions available in itself. So I think I showed you this before, so we're going to do it again. Let's go to this H1. So locate H, my H, and this is my one. And page 130? Yeah. So H1, it says to do, to insert the function button. So we go function right here. Uh, we're looking for category. Okay, we're gonna just select date and time. Date and time. We're gonna look for Now, let's scroll down and look for now. Here it is now, see that? I'm gonna click okay. Uh, I'm gonna close the parentheses because the parentheses has to be closed, so we close the parentheses. And we press enter. Mm -hmm. Wait, Mr. Vasquez, can you please repeat that again? Uh, the, what you did on H? We'll go to H1, we'll go to that function, F button right here. And we go for um, category. 
category we're looking for is called date and time right here, date and time. Oh. And, and then we scroll down to, we see the word now. Now. Click OK, it says. And then uh, we have to close the parentheses. It says, Can, can you uh, um can you unmute uh, your, your, your tablet? Yeah. And it's literally okay by button function. Uh -huh. it's data system data. Uh -huh. so it's right here. And we we'll go function again. Step number three on page 131. What I need to do. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I'm not doing it. I don't know what they were looking for, but it's not. It's not doing them. The one they want us to do. So what we're gonna do probably is format it. Day this day and time in the select so the the full day and time format, which is and then the hour. And the hour is long. I think. remember we realized that the hours were wrong on this. I don't know where the server is located. It's getting the server from somewhere else. I have a question. Today is the third, not fourth. Yeah, I know. Something something is wrong with this thing, the way it's doing it. Oh, okay. Uh, so manually? Wait a minute. Uh, Jorge, your question? What was your question? Yeah, see see where you have the function, the fx log uh, icon? Okay, and then next to it, it says now on that, on that space right here next to your right, it says now. Uh -huh. um, That's the function that I inserted. Yeah, so my question is, is that a is that a chance to type it right there? That's why it, that's why it's an option. You can type it, yeah. If you know the function, you can type it. Here it says to add it from that list. Yeah. It's a process, but either way is the same thing. Okay. So I always say that there's many ways to do the same thing. That's one of the things about about, uh, about all the programs. You know, there's several ways to do the same. Thing. <clears throat> Number three on page 131 is not going to work, so we have to do use the format then. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, the format. Yeah, I'm not seeing those sound. Or number format right here. Okay, they want us to do this thing because we're gonna click right click and then go to number format that option. When I click it, it gives me this window. So again, bring your mouse on the on the date and you go format, number format right here. And it'll give us this, this option. They want us from this option to choose uh three, fourteen, twelve. So so first we wanna select date. 314 12. That's the one they want us to select. Okay. Day 314 12. And it says to click OK. Even though it's a day ahead, it's okay. That's 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 what the program is doing. It's, it's uh, nothing to do with that. We're doing it the right way. It's another day for this computer already. And I think it's this, this server is located. It's another day already. Oh, it's because we're having dinner. You could tell what? Make sure that we uh we uh mute ourselves okay so because then we think you talk to us and then you talk to somebody in your your uh, your end. The 
Pita sí se puede, puede hacer bien su uh, computer. Su uh, tablet. What is it you trying to do, Marija? I I can't get the I get <laughs> I can't get the uh, the date. The date function. And now. Yeah. All right. Let me repeat the steps that I did. Okay. So just look at my screen right now. Okay. First thing is you go to H one. That's where the date is going to be stamped. Mm -hmm. The way they wanted us to do it is that we're going to click on the function button here. The little yeah. And then when it comes up, it has like a little box with all the different options. We're going to yeah. go to, I would say, pick a category. So you're going to click on pick a category. We're going to scroll down to we see date and time. Okay. The, four, uh, the third option. Once I do that, I'm going to scroll down now on that list of the different functions until I find the one that says now. There it is, now. See? Once I locate the now function, I'm gonna insert it by clicking OK. So now it has a now function, but I need to close the parentheses. So I have to just close the parentheses here and then press enter. Uh, that's where I was going, doing the wrong one. That was one step. The second okay. step is just to change it, to go to right click and then go to number format. Number format is gonna give us yet another box with a different yeah. option for number format. We're looking for date, and we're looking for 3, 14, 12. This format, that's the one they wanted us to do. This is on page 131. Okay. Uh, you can always look on your textbook, page 131. And then uh -huh. click OK, and it will modify it to 11, 4, 20. Otherwise- Oh, OK. I got it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just... sorry, what was the second step that you did? You want to right click on it? And you're gonna go to number format. Number format. Okay. And we're gonna select date from the category. And we're gonna select 3, 14, 12 from the type. And then we'll click okay. Uh, and there's a picture right there on your, on, your, uh, on your textbook on page 131. That's where I'm seeing it and it's just matching the picture. 3, 12, 2. 3, 14, 12. You see, actually, it's not that one. It's 314-2012. It's way more down. It's right here, look at class. It's this one, it's way down more. Uh, one one before the last one. 314-2012. They want the year to be uh, four or four digits instead of two. I have it on two digits. It needs to be four digits for the, for the year. So scroll down more until you see that. It's almost the last one. one one before the last. I'm gonna click OK and look at it. It's gonna give me the 2020. So it should read 11, 14, 2020. Mm -hmm. I got 11, 4, 20. You need to go and modify it. Go down more until you see that the one that has the four digits, okay? Okay. That's that's step number three on page um, on page one thirty one. So we're ready to go to uh, step number four on page one thirty one. Says um, step four. We already set up the format. It says to set it up to best fit right here. So we're gonna we're gonna. I think you can right click right here. Okay, this one doesn't have it. 
I think you have to like double click in between the two. No, it doesn't have the, they wanted us to select column width. I can go column width right here. And see, um, sometimes the other, the full version says best fit. This one doesn't have it, so I don't have the number. But just kind of like resize on to you, you kind of like have it like in the textbook. In the textbook, they barely fit right here. That's too much, no, they fit right there. So I resize it, they wanted us to resize it. That's because it's not that big. At uh, what number we're gonna resize it? Then it didn't say a number, just this says to kind of the best fit. Whichever fits better. And number nine is okay. Whichever in your computer looks good. Mine looks good at uh what 94 pixels, 12. But it's very um so you know, just whichever you like. 12 will be good, then don't go too much because then the all the numbers are not gonna show. It doesn't really have a number, so. <laughs> well, just on H2, they want us to put our date of birth. <laughs> I don't know why. But it says, uh, select H, style H2 and enter the place, oh, the place of your birth. Donde nacieron. Born in Mexicali, so I'm just gonna put the city in Mexicali. I don't know why they went there. It's just funny. And then uh, we're supposed to save the work, but remember it saves automatically. So we're now done with page 131. We're ready for 132. We still have a lot, a lot more to do on this. I want you to do now. Okay. Absolute versus relative address. Learning about absolute cells and and uh, relative cells. You know, page one thirty four has like a little uh, table with the different and uh, different types of uh, formulas, relative and absolute. Absolute formulas are the ones that we want to make sure that they don't change. They they don't change. They stay the same. So let's see how they want to use it before I go into it. So let's go to page one thirty five where the exercise actually starts. It says on page one thirty five. It says click cell B five. Okay, B and then okay five. Here it is. All right. Here we're going to enter a, the first formula for this. So we just they want us to enter the equal sign. Um, equal sign, then select sub B4. So we're going to select sub B4. There. Equal sign, then click on B4. And then we're going to type times. We'll go right there. And then the uh, parentheses. And then they want us to type B1, uh, one, sorry, 1 minus B19. I can just click on B19. B19. This right here. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's equals B4 parentheses. No, I'm sorry, times, and then parentheses, one minus B19. To continue entering the formula and then press the F4 key to change the cell reference from a relative to a cell reference absolute. Let me see if we would do it though. F, uh, they want us to press F4, let me try it. I don't know if it's available on this version. Oh yeah, it did. Notice how we added on that, they changed it from relative to absolute. It's in that was an absolute reference. So we're gonna close the parentheses. 
and then you press enter. How do I add it? The dollar sign B, dollar sign AT. That makes it uh, uh, what we call a, an absolute reference. Uh, here it gives you a little bit of absolute reference. While the cell reference uh, C4 is correct, the cell reference C23 reference is an empty cell. Okay, let me see where it explains exactly what, what that means. Um, oh, it's an absolute reference requiring this formula. No, next. As you learn modules one and two, Excel modifies self references when copying formulas. However, sometimes while copying a formula, you do not want Excel to change the self reference. So, to keep a self reference constant when copying a formula or function, it is the self references do not change relative to where you were copying the formula. You use a technique called absolute self reference. It's like we're going to copy this formula, but remember when we copy formulas, it changes, you know, depends on where, where you paste in the formula. Well, on this one, it doesn't change the, 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 the B19. It's always going to be B19. So everything is going to be times B19, times B19. Let me show you. So I'm going to press enter. And if I do this, look at it. If I copy this formula here, no, notice what happened here. See? It copy the same formula here. So it's using B19 for all of them. See? So B19 is a reference. Uh, again, for B19 for the reference because it's an absolute formula. Absolute means it's never going to change. It's always going to use 70.75%. When I was a, uh, when I was putting the formula on uh, B5 and I put minus B19 and then I got last right there after you put I'm the money. Uh, okay, just wait. So notice how, how it, it references to this cell. That's because I put an absolute reference. Now, let me delete this. And then just put a, a regular reference. Look at the difference. If I put a regular reference, will be equals B, okay? Uh, let me go back to this. I just want to show you the difference between the two. So I'm going to go to B4. So click on B4. And then I'm going to do times one. Oh, parentheses. I'm sorry, parentheses or no? Yeah, parentheses. One and then um, minus B19. I'm just going to put B19, which is this right here. But I'm not going to use uh, the, the absolute reference. I'm going to do just what, the, what is called um, uh, uh, a relative reference. Because when I press enter, it gives me the same result as I had before. But look at what's going to happen when I move this the formula here. It changed completely because now it's using right here, it's using C19. Because I copy the formula, it thinks that I need to move all of them. So on the next one, look at it's gonna be D19. And on the next one, it's gonna use E19 and so on. So it's not it's it's, it's not it's using relative a reference, meaning that it's it's copying, thinking that I'm that everything I'm gonna I'm gonna multiply right here is on the bottom of this, thinking that this is gonna move them. But when I do that, the, the, the full reference, the, the absolute reference, it doesn't do that. You respect the one cell I'm using. When I, when I go right here, let me just modify it. I'm right there and I press F4 on the, on the keyboard, there's a set of keys called the function keys. They have an F at the beginning, that's the function key. So it says to press F4 and notice how we changed it. You saw that? It added a dollar sign, that means it's a, an absolute reference, meaning that it's gonna use this number, 78.75%, not numbers that are, don't exist right here. So when I press enter and I copy the formula, it will copy my formula as an absolute formula. So meaning that it's one of the same reference that I have over there, it's gonna use it right here. You see that? It's using the same formula for both of them. It's, um, uh, so right here, it uses the same formula. For both of them here. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get how you got the symbol. Could you repeat it, please? Uh, it says you press F4. On the keyboard, on your keyboard, there's one key called the function key. Uh, and one of them is the F4. F4 before the B19? Uh, no, before the parentheses. After the B19. After the B19, then the F4.
Because he's using a tablet and won't have this like this. Like when you wore um, a tablet keyboard, you won't have this function. It's the only thing with, with that. It is a, this is kind of like a tablet keyboard, the one you're seeing right now. Notice that it doesn't have the function keys up here. So that's the only problem with that. So that's what I was telling you. Is this a, a, a phone? It's what I told my students, you know, like, I can't do it on my phone. It's a computer class, not a phone class. So then you're going to have a hard time, you know, when, when the same thing, if you're doing it on your iPad, it's going to be difficult because it, 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 these exercises are designed to be done on a computer with a regular keyboard. A laptop can do it because a laptop has those function keys, but a tablet doesn't have that. Just uh, so you know that, because in the mornings I have all kinds of complaints from my students. I can do that part. It's not. I go first. First, you start. You are in a computer class. You have to have a computer to do these exercises. Um, so that's that's the cell reference. Uh, really nice. You know, you copy the formula to all of them, and it will copy it exactly the same way. All right, but, I, but it does not tell me to copy them. So I just did it to show you, okay? So let me undo this, because I don't know if they want us to copy that or not. I just did it to show you. All right, so this is step number one on page 135, what I just did. I'm gonna do now step number two. I already did, so I have the same result. 11,687.5, correct. So now I'm gonna click on cell B6, right here. When I copy the formulas to the rest of the month, I just wanted to show you how, when you copy using a, an absolute reference, it, it copies uh, the absolute reference that you use. In this case, about 78.75%. It transfers that same to the other ones. All right, so any questions? Continue on this. Okay, I'm on, on step number three on uh, page 135. Let's click on cell B6, which I'm already there on B6. To select the cell in which to enter the next formula. So we're gonna do another formula. All right, so we're gonna type equals. Remember to do a formula, you have to press the, the equal sign first. So equal sign, there it is. And I'm gonna do, um, Click cell B4 again, there it is. Then we're gonna type the minus. And I'm going to look, cause I'm looking at the formula, it's positive step by step. Then click the cell B5. Right. What a reference to the cell, to the cell to the formula. Click the enter button. In the formula to display the result, this should be 43,312.50 cents. So let's see. 43,312.50 cents. That's what you should have, okay? Let me double click to so you can see the formula here. It's a simple formula equals B4 minus B5. How are we doing? We're good? Give you a quick update in case you're following the app. Uh, huh? Question? Yes, Mr. Buck. All right, Nita. I'm here. 
question? Uh, you have a question or no? Uh, Gabby or Gabby. Um, Alma, don't don't forget to put your name on the on the thing. Um, Alma, I because I have to submit the attendance uh, and I send them the the list of the students and and Zoom gives me a list of the name that you're using. So you have to change your name to your actual name that you're um, enrolling or registered. So no van a creer que yo ando inventando gente, so. No questions, continue? Yes. All right, no, I just wanted to show you really quick here an update on this thing. You can see um, this is the count right now. Uh, Biden 131 and Donald Trump 92. These are the uh, electoral votes per state. But it's going to be a long line. There's still a bunch of states that are not counted yet. And these are just projections, okay? So it's not the actual final thing. All right, so that completed uh, step, uh, page 135. So let's move on to page 136. And it's, it's, it has an explanation about the if function. The if function is, the if function is uh, we call it a logical test. So that when you tell your kid, look, if you saca la basura, I'm gonna give you this. If you do this, then you get this other thing. That's called a logical test. And, uh, and if in, in, in computers is used to set up a logical test. For example, if I go, if you um, say you're, uh, you're, um, you're a worker, you know, and you need to, I don't know, do something and, and you have to complete a task of, let's say so many boxes that you have to stamp, just an example. Okay, so if you, if, if you stamp, let's say a hundred boxes, an hour, boxes an hour, then you're you're be uh, completing your 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 task or your assignment. If you do that, then you know once you get to a thousand, you're you're done. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a, like a, if you do this, then this other thing is gonna happen. That is called a logical test. And uh, believe it or not, but uh, um, artificial intelligence, computers, AI, they call it. Uh, I, they're basically they operate that way. They operate, they learn from humans to operate that way. To something happens, then they're gonna do this other thing. As a matter of fact, in the 1940s or 50s, this guy named um, Isaac Asimov, I've never heard of him, but uh, he's kind of like the, the father of, of the uh, of robotics, basically, because uh, he set up the first laws of robotics. Uh, and uh, the laws are funny because, you know, they're, a little, uh, a little tricky, but it's, it's, it's if. It uses the if uh, function, basically, for, for, uh, for artificial intelligence. Okay. So when, when, when Google does something, like if you, you know, you notice when, if you, in, on your phone, you notice this, you know, every once in a while, if you're on the, online using your phone, you're using Google Chrome or whatever, browsing the internet, you get a lot of advertising, even in, in, in um, in your um in your on your phone when you're watching a video from youtube you get advertising that is specifically directed at you why because if you know if you do this then you you do this other thing google knows what you're doing and that's how they target you by by applying this logical test <laughs> it's a little more complex than ever they use logical tests a lot in, in, uh, in artificial intelligence okay so here we're gonna use it to apply it to accounting, to this thing that we have. Uh, an example here, look at it, at the bottom, it says uh, sales revenue greater than or equals to 65,000. Yes, then bonus equals to $3,500. If you have sales over $65,000, you're gonna get a bonus of uh, $3,500. Now, if you don't have sales higher, or no, this is greater or equal than 65,000, let's say you only sold two cars during the year or whatever. But it, it, it only amounted to less than $65,000, $64,000. Uh, then you don't get no bonus. 
See, that's a logical test. If you do this, then you get this other thing. But if you don't, then you get something else or you don't get nothing. That's a logical test. So just so you can understand that part. So now we're gonna uh, put it in a function. And that's what they want us to do. Okay, so, and here the Excel, uh, you use the, the, fun, the if function when you want to assign a value to the cell based on a logical test. For example, CB9 can be assigned the following if function. If B4 is greater than or equals to dollar sign B or B21 absolute formula, comma, and B20 absolute formula, and then if it's if it, the values, that's a test. But if it's true, then you get that, that bonus right there on B20. But if it's not, then you get zero. All right, so let's let's do it now, actually, so you guys can see it in under. Because right now, I don't think you're getting what I'm trying to say. But once you see it on the screen, it, it will make sense to you. All right, so look at Let's click on cell B9. Everybody still with me? Or ya los perdí a todos? It's a, little, it's a little complex understanding this if function, but, uh, but it will make sense right now. All right, so everybody, let's go to B9. And on B9, it says that we're gonna insert, insert the next formula. So we're gonna click the function first, function. And then say so we're looking for a category here. So we're gonna click on categories. We have to pick a category. We're gonna scroll down till we find the function, the logical. Fine, so if you go down, there's one that says logical. Here they look at me, right below uh, text and above uh, information. It says logical. So I'm gonna click on that. Now I have the different options. So I'm gonna pick a function for that. We're gonna scroll down and pick the um, if function. See here is, is the third one. We got n, false, if, if error, if no or not. All these are logical functions. So we're gonna select the one that says if. Look at what it says that it does here. It checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if it's true and another value if it's false. So for example, mijo, si saca la basura todos los días, I'm gonna give you $20 at the end of the, the week from Friday. Well, I don't know how much you know the reward for your kids. My son, he helps me out, he gets $100 a month. So he's, he heat up, but he, I have him do, has to do the dishes, he has to do all kinds of things. So he's like, okay, I'm exploding him. <laughs> so I don't know. But anyway, so if he does that, he gets $100. If he doesn't, then he gets less. So, you know, it's a, it's a condition. It's the same thing here. All right, so we're going to click OK. And here is the if ready to do the logical test. What is going to be the logical test? This is gonna be the logical test, okay? So we're gonna to go to the next page and we're gonna type B4. So we're gonna go if B4, so we're gonna put B4 right here, that amount right there, okay? Greater, so we use the, 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 the greater than symbol, which is that. That's, you highlighted B5. I'm B5. Okay. Just put B4 right here. There it is. So B4 and then put greater than or equal. So I have to put the equal sign. That means greater than or equals to. Okay. And then it's gonna be the uh, the B21 function. That, so we don't have anything on B21. So we go B21 right here. And then remember we press F4 to convert it into a into a, uh, an absolute formula, or you can just type the type it the way I did, and you know you can just type it dollar b dollar uh, sign b twenty one. Okay, so, but I, if you just press the number, it will do it automatically. Uh, so that's a logical test right there. If b four is greater or equals to b twenty one sixty five thousand, then here comes the first thing. So the first thing is going to be true that what is gonna be the reward. So it says to put, um, we're gonna put a comma. This is the comma where we need. Let me check the formula exactly. Yeah, it's a comma. So we put the comma to separate what's gonna happen. So put the comma please after that. And then we're ready to put what we're gonna put. So if, if it's true, then we're gonna give the bonus, which is uh, on 20. 
3,500. So we're going to put um, D20 right here. But we're going to convert it into an absolute formula. So we go F4. All right. So meaning if the person sells more, more or, or, or equals to 65,000, then they're going to get $3,500 bonus. But if no, then we're going to put the next, uh, the next available option. How much is they going to get? They're going to get zero. So we type the zero. And that's how a logic of this is done. So I'm going to close the parentheses. When you press enter, you see no. Are we ready to do that or no? Happy my friend, and then, and then you guys can see it. You can follow it on the textbook. I'm, I'm on page 138. Uh, and, it, and, it, and I just follow the textbook to do it. So when I present it, look at what happens. Este no agarró nada. Porque, why? Because he didn't sell a equal to 65,000 no more than 65,000. They only got 55,000. Okay, the revenue. So they don't get the bonus. So they got zero. You, you get it? Okay, let me change this. If I, they say they sold, um, they sold uh, uh, 75,000. See, that's more. So I'm gonna press enter. Oh, it says more than it. put seventy-five thousand on it. Give me one second here. If I go seventy-five thousand, look at it. It changes to three thousand five hundred. So they get the bonus. But if it's less, in this case, it's fifty-five thousand. They don't get it because it's less than fifty than sixty-five thousand. See that? Zero. No bonus. You understand what happened there? We did what is called a logical test. We tested to see that, that during the first month. They were able to, in sales and revenue, make more than, more or equals to sixty-five thousand. So look at it. If, I, if it's sixty-five thousand exactly, they should be able to get the bonus also because it's it's greater or equals. But look at, I'm gonna go sixty-five thousand, which is exactly the same as equals. They get the bonus. Why? Because the logical test says if it's greater or equals. In this case, it's equals to sixty-five thousand. Sales revenue for bonus is called. You get it? You guys understood that? I know. That's how they do it, I guess, with salespeople. That's why nobody wants to be in sales. It's that hard. It's probably one of the hardest uh, professions to be a salesperson. That's why they're the salesperson. It's the ones that go door to door. That's probably the hardest thing ever. Um. I don't know if any of you ever were on sales. That's hard. Anyway, any questions on this? Let me go back and put the formula here. There is the formula. I just wanted you to understand what the formula is doing. The formula is checking that the revenue for the month is is greater, meaning more than sixty-five thousand or equals to sixty-five thousand. If it is, they get three thousand five hundred dollar bonus. Uh, which is listed on, on, on B20. See, no, they don't get nothing. They get zero. Yeah. Eso todo o nada. <laughs> so. We're good? Yeah. Okay, so continue. You guys uh, want me to continue or? If you never use uh, if uh, command, it is a little tricky to understand it. Uh, if you understand it, it makes sense and it's easy to grasp the uh, grasp the the the, uh, the concept. Okay, so enter the remaining formulas for the month. So this is what we're gonna do next. They want us to go to. I'm on page now, 139, 139 page. We're gonna select B10 this time. So let me press enter here. B10. I'm on B10. The commission. We're gonna type equals. Where am I getting these formulas? From the textbook. I'm getting them from there. B4. So I just click on the B4. Uh, it makes it easy. I can just type it also. Click or type whichever is easy for you, okay? And I'm going to go times. Uh, and once again, they want us to do a B22. So B22 is right here. The commission. But it's also a absolute formula. So I'm just going to press F4 on the keyboard, 
there it is, convert it to, a, to a, an absolute formula. And then it says to press down to enter the formula. But I don't see it by pressing down, so not a good thing, see? Press down doesn't work here, so we have to press enter. There. So, and it has on page 139 the list of the formula that you need to type, okay? So that was um, B10 now on B11 side rental. Wait a minute, I don't know. B10 type that, then press the down key to enter the formula and the select itself. Type equals press. Okay, B11, we're gonna press the, the following B4. You can just type it, okay? Remember, you can just type it. B4 is the same thing. And then we're gonna do times. And then again is a, is a 23, the side rental. But you have to convert it into um, absolute formula. And it says to press enter. It says press the down arrow, but it doesn't work if you press it. Just press enter. How do, you put, how do you put the money sign uh, so fast? Uh, on, the, on the computer, you have to press the F4, the function 4. It's a key that is at the very top. It's a oh. bunch of keys with an F uh, first. And then enter after that? Uh -huh. And that, that's it. You just uh, press enter after that. It will do it automatically. It will do the... Uh, it will do the dollar sign automatically. If not, you can just type it manually, whichever is easy for you, okay? Uh, the idea is that you let the computer do it automatically. Okay. But that was for B, um, for B11. Marketing is the next one. B, uh, for, um, B14, no, B12. Marketing, they want us to type B4. That's on, I'm on B12 now. So it's B4 again. With, without the equal sign? No, you have to have the equal sign. Look at what happens if I don't put the equal sign. No pasa nada. Because it's not a formula. I just do back for presenter. I just, I just type B4. I have to put the formula always before. See now, who knows how it changed now? Okay, so before. This is B24. So it's the one for marketing. So it's gonna be times B24, which is marketing. And then also do the same thing. And then press enter. Now, now we're in equipment and maintenance. Can you do it again, please? So it's equal before times uh, B24, but, but it's the absolute reference. And then enter. And then enter to, uh, to apply it. Now we're on uh, 13, equipment, repair, and maintenance. For that one, is equals again, B4, once again. And this time it's uh, times uh, B25. Let me scroll down here. B25 is repair, equipment, repair, and maintenance. And once again, they want us to do the uh, absolute formula and then press enter. So it's kind of like we're repeating the same thing for this. That completes step number one. We should now go to sub B14. Okay, so now B14, total expenses. Uh, click the sum, out about, uh, sum uh, button here, auto sum. And then make sure that it's adding um, it twice. I don't know why. D9 and B13. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not sure if that's what we're adding. Yeah, the bonus. 
I'm checking the formula B9 to B13. Yeah, perfect. So press enter. Right. And that's the total expenses here. The sum of B19, B9, I'm sorry, and B13. B9 and B13, so perfect. That is on uh, total expenses. All right, so we're good on that. Now they want us to go to cell B16, operating income right here. If you need to go back and do one or you miss one of these, let me know, okay? Because there's a bunch of a bunch of formulas that we're adding here. We're gonna copy them all to the rest of the month, but we have to set up the first month first. Okay, so we're on B16, operating income, and then we're gonna put equals B6 minus B14. So B6 minus B14, yeah? 14 minus total expenses. And it says to press enter. And let's see. The answer, the uh, amount should be 19,387. Is that what everybody has? Yeah. Okay. Give you a couple of minutes to catch up to the to the thing, and then let me know. Okay. We're good? Okay, I have a couple of questions. Let me uh... Okay, so we're ready to continue. So we're in um, this is step three. We're not gonna do that because it doesn't work here to show the uh, the formulas. In order to show the formula, you have to double click on each one and it shows the formulas. See? Okay. Just uh, why should I view the formulas version on the worksheet? It just shows how, how we view the formulas. In this case, if you double click, it shows the formula. Oops. Cancel. Double click, it shows the formula. Okay. Just all you need to know. The copy formulas with absolute self references using the field hand, handle. So we're ready to copy the formulas as I was telling you earlier. So let's go to page 140 now to copy all the formulas down the, uh, the rest of the month. Uh, and it, yeah. Uh, could, could you please repeat how we got the operating income? Operating income. 
the formula. The formula is B6 minus B14. Okay, gross margin, less total expenses. Great, thank you. Gross margin. <laughs> All right, in order for us to copy the formula, we're gonna highlight B, um, this is B5 all the way down to B, B16 uh, from the uh, cost of goods, goods sold all the way down to a net upper end income. We're going to drag the little, the little fill handle, this little box right here, all the way down to June. There it is. I'm going to let go and ask you to copy all the formulas. See, like this, the 3,500 is on March because they, they sold um, higher than 65,000. This one too, 90,000. So they got the bonus. 77, they got the bonus. And 74, they got the bonus. On 62, they did not get the bonus. Well, let me repeat this. If you have not done the copy of the formulas, you highlight from B5 all the way down to B16, and then we drag it all the way down to June. And that's the rest of the formulas. Um, you guys wanna take a quick five minute break just to, uh, uh, if you were able to get to this point. So we're on page, uh, if you didn't do it, go to page 140. So step one and two on page 140. Okay. Pues, uh, pues here it says Biden, but you know what? I'm looking at the states that are supposedly the, the, the um, battleground states, they call it, like Pennsylvania, and uh, Trump is ahead. But it's only 20, what is it, 26% of the voting. Uh, Ohio, also Trump is ahead with 57% um, of the voting. And Georgia, Trump is ahead. Way ahead, is 55%. But what it's only 45% of the voting. Florida. Huh? What about Florida? Florida, Trump is going to end up winning because it's 51% to 47% the Biden. And it's already 97%. There's no way Biden can make a comeback. No. Texas is the same thing. Yeah. Well, Texas is a little closer because you got uh, have 51% of the vote and it's 50 uh, Trump and 48 Biden, Biden. So that's a little closer. Arizona, Biden is ahead. That's a big change right there. Um, but it's only, look, at it's only 5.5% of the voting. So it's not, it's not permanent, so. So there's a bunch of, there's a lot more going on right now. So we still don't know. Iowa, Trump is ahead too. Wisconsin, Trump is ahead, but it's only 42% of that. Are you, are you, do you have that out of Google? Uh, no, this is on, um, uh, well, this is on Microsoft website. Microsoft has news automatically. So who knows, you know, it could, Trump could win it too. This is what I'm looking at. Uh, see, uh, they all need to win. Whoever wins Pennsylvania and Missouri will win basically the presidency. You know, el, 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 the vice president cannot defend the money. Huh? The vice, the vice president cannot defend the money. No, is it? Well, yeah, he lives in Pennsylvania. Yeah, but it, it, it's... Uh, yeah, he's actually from Delaware. Yeah. He lived there. So we'll see. See, right now, this is kind of like how the map looks. See, all the red ones are what Trump is winning. And the blue ones are the ones where um, Biden has won. So, but it's only 27% of the voting. So it's, it's, it's going to be a long night, to be honest. It'll be a long, long night. <laughs> Uh, probably. 
So we'll see what happens. So. No se sabe todavía. Yeah, it's just right here on the, on the, um, where I have this map. So we'll see, we'll see. Todavía hay muchos que. So not, not fully, um. If you buy it in Lewis, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan and Wisconsin, that's it. He, he, Trump is going to win again. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. That's a really close, really close race. Uh, and if you think about it, it shouldn't be. You know, this, this guy totally mismanaged the, um, the pandemic and... But you know, you know, people, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. I see. All right, I'm, I'm going to go and have a uh, check on my family. I'll be right back, okay? <clears throat>
Thank you for all your
All right, we're ready to continue or still waiting for everybody to get back. All right, let's um let's get back to this. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so we are everybody back in, you know? Yeah. Well you are, but I don't know if everybody else is. Uh, I'm yeah. here. Yeah, all right. I'm right here. Okay, so, so far we're on, um, uh, we left off on page 140, step number two, where we drag and copy the formulas from cost of goods sold all the way down to operating income, down to the month of June. So we're done with that part. Now it says on the bottom of page 140, to determine raw totals and non-adjacent sales. The following steps determine that raw totals in each column H. So let me move this a little bit here. So we're gonna work on column H right here. To determine the new totals using the sum button, select only the cells in column H containing numbers <clears throat> in adjacent cells to the left. If for example, you select the range H5 to H16, Excel will display zeros as the sum of empty rows. In cells H7, H8, and H15. So this is what we're gonna do first. We're gonna select the range H5 to H6. H5 to H6, so this two. While holding the control key. Then select the range H9 to H14. Let me see if we will do it. Oops, yeah, I will do it so. So we highlight this two and then H. Um, H9 to H14, so here, to there. See, so yeah, I highlighted both. Okay, now click the auto sum button. Mm, no lo deja hacer, it doesn't do it. Nope. So it won't do it, so we have to do one at a time, I guess. Let me see if it does two. It does two at a time, but not all of them. Let me see if it's the correct amount here, 490. Okay, so we have to do, you know, do it separately because it doesn't do it at the same time. So do first uh, H, uh, what is it, H4 to H6. No, I'm sorry, H5 to H6. And then the second one is H9 to H14, so this. Now so do the other sum. Checking the amounts to make sure they're correct, yeah, the correct amounts. And then finally we do, 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 do. So H16, <clears throat> this one, so we go out of some. And it should be 136,517 with 50 cents. So that's what we need to do, okay? So out of some on all this, this two, and then this uh, from nine to 14, and then this one. Should be out of sum on all of them. Let 
now we'll complete page 140. And we're ready to go into uh, page 141. It says nested forms of the if function. A nested if function is one in which the action to be taken for the true or false case includes yet another if function. The second if function is considered to be nested or layered within the first. You can use a nested if function to add another condition to the decision making process. Okay, so here it shows one. If sub revenues are greater or equal than 65,000, we yes, we get the um, bonus. No, you don't get the bonus. But then see here, they're adding another one. Sales revenue greater than or equals to 80,000. Then you get, yes, a bonus of $5,500. No, you get the bonus of $3,500. So we can do another condition on top of the one that is already there. And that's what we're gonna do on this one, okay? Oh, it's, it's getting more complicated. But let's see if we can get it done. What did it say to do it or no? I'm looking at the condition, but it doesn't say to do it, no? I was just talking about it, but I, I don't know. It doesn't say anything to do on the next page. It just explains that you can add another condition if necessary. I'm going to have to do that. I was just explaining that we can add another condition there, nested within the other condition. So it's okay. Um, so the next one is to add a sparkling chart to the worksheet. I don't know if that is, that is available here. Let's see, let's see if, it, if it allows us to do it. It says on B3. So this is B3. Let's see, if necessary, scroll down to the worksheet. So that both column B and I and row three are visible. Okay, column B and I. So here's I and B and then row three are available. So give me one second here. I think it's my son <laughs> coming in. I'm going to try to do the, the um, sparking chart. I don't know if it will let us, but to do so, select cell. I two. I four. Let me see if it does it. So I. 142? 440, no, 142. Uh -huh, 142. Let me see if it does this. So I'm in uh, I four. Let me do it first and I'll let you know if we, we're able to do it or not. Sir, I'm trying to so display the insert tab. I don't see yeah. it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be there. So insert. No, it's not the list.
Lupita, si ¿sí se puede, si ¿sí puede poner el mío mientras. Oh, pero yo, yo no estaba haciendo ruido ni nada. No. <ríe> es que se oye back, background noise en el disco. No. La... No. No, yo estoy sola, no tengo a nadie aquí. No, no, ruido de como de background uh, um, del micrófono. Oh, eh, ok, let me. Póngase en mute, ¿verdad? Me, o si no, es, es Jorge, uno de los dos. No, pero sí, ya no sé yo. Uh, let me see. I'm looking for those um, sparkling charts. Yeah, they don't, they don't show this thing. Yeah. It's just a line chart. Maybe we can use any other chart is part of I don't know. I'm looking on the regular it says create a spark line. So insert and then and then uh, uh yeah. Yeah, see we don't have that section. All right. We don't have it. But maybe we can use a line chart. Oh, no, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it. It will do just a complete chart. So it doesn't have that feature. This this version. See when it's a spark line, uh, it does it right here. It shows a little graphic chiquita aquí. So this one doesn't have it. All right, so we can skip that. I have to skip that, that, that is step for the uh, sparkling charts. See, I don't know if you see him here on the next page. But, uh, <clears throat> but we can do that section. <clears throat> Let me just um, ask the question, see if we can do the spark lines. Question online. Uh, it's not available, see. Just to be sure. Excel on that for see this is what we do but uh, I don't know maybe no oh yeah it, it does work like it I used I was used to be able to make structures in early versions of Excel but in Office 65 I am unable can I do so I can easily do this using Google Sheets and Google Finance Okay, so no, we're not gonna even worry about it because it's gonna be too complicated. Let's just keep this step completely because it's gonna get more complicated. So let's uh, skip that. Let's go down to um, 
There's one step that we need to do that I saw right here. For we, okay, so. Oh no, no, no step, just. Let's go to page, um, I'm gonna have to go down to page 145 where it says formatting the worksheet. So, uh, and then turn it to the next page. That's what we're gonna do the formatting of, of the worksheet, okay? It starts on uh, page um, 146. To assign formats to a non adjacent regions. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Select the range B4 to H4. So B4, oh, where's B4? B4 right here to H4. The following the steps assign format to the number rows and through 16. Why did this format increase? Okay, so we're going to select range B4 to H4. This right here. Okay. So we, we and I don't think we can do more than, more than one, I don't think. So we're going to, we'll have to click on home to do it. Uh, this one, they want us to do the... Click the currency category for this. So uh, let me see if it does more than one. The next one is B6 to A6. B6 to A6, oops. Let me see if it does it. Uh, the one, the currency. Oh yeah, it does, it does more than one. So we can do it this way. Let me undo it and then show you. So they want us to do B4 to H4. There's a control key. And then B6 to H6. And then um, B9, press the control key still, B9 to H9. And then B14 to H14. And then uh, B16 to H16. See, they want us to do it that way so that we do them all in one shot. But if you want to do one at a time, it's fine. They want us to go to format, I mean, number, and then select currency. That's what they and want. You said the, uh, we need to push the control key. Control key. You press the control key. We need to hold it down or just push it? Hold, it? hold it down. Just press it. Keep it down. Click the number for down or back launcher. Go to the number group and display the format cells. Click currency in the category. And it says to click currency. Okay, so it goes. It says to go to number format to this window, and we're gonna select currency with a negative um, negative set to parentheses right here. So currency, and then this negative number for all those cells. Okay, and it's gonna be two digits. Yeah. I'll keep it there till you guys are ready. And then we just click OK. And all those uh, that we highlighted are going to automatically change, OK? So let me show you here. So we go click OK. See, now it's how they all change at the same time. So once again, it's, uh, you go to number format. You go more number formats. And you have to manually select this currency. And then the one that has a 1,234. 1,234 in 10 cents. In parentheses, that's the format they want us to use. This is to be two, two, and then right here like that. And then you click okay. And it did all of them at the same time. I wanna to click to the select them all there. So that way I don't have to do one at a time. I can do all of them in one, one step. But if it's easy for you to do one at a time, do one at a time. First is A B4 to H4, then B6 to H6, and then it's B10 to H10, and then B14 to H14, and the last one is B16 to H16. All right, so that's what it says to do. And I'm looking at the textbook just to make sure that I follow the steps. Uh, 
for the next one, um, they want us to do is the comment style, I think, for the next one. But let's go ahead and uh, now that we're going to select the range B5, this right here, all the way down to H5. Oops. And then press the control key, do B10 to H13 right here and then um, now we'll go to the number format for this this is only the b5 to h h5 and b11 i mean h11 is that what i said let me make sure no b10 wait a minute b10 to h4 b5 okay, let me do it again from here, it says to do. This is B10. B10 to H13. So this right here, and it shouldn't be that, but that's the way they want. Yeah, I think they want us to do the first one, the bonus, the nine. The bonus too? But it yeah. doesn't say that. No, I mean for, for, the, for the currency. Mm -hmm. You know how is the first lane and the last one? Uh huh. B9 to H9. Oh, that's right. B9. Okay. B9 to H9. Also, they want us to do the currency. So. so more number formats, currency, and we pick this one too. The the one in parentheses. Symbol. There's one symbol on this one. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Click on that on the text, see how it shows you. Oh yeah. Then the one the comma style for the last one is what we're we're planning to do. But it's um all right, so it says this this time it's select B5. See, this is what it's throwing me off is B5 to B H5. And then while holding the control key, they want us to highlight B10 to um, H13. Right there. And then click on the number format. And this one, they want us to do the, uh, the currency. But no, no dollar sign. I go currency, Oy, not that one, sorry, is this one. More number formats, currency, but no symbol on this, none. And they want us to use the same, that 12, 34, 10 in parentheses. So when I click OK, you notice how you got rid of the, of the dollar sign? But it added a comma. Which option was after the, uh, after the curve? You go to more uh, number formats and then select uh, its currency again. Currency, uh, but this time no symbol. So it says symbol, we'll put none. And then we'll select the, uh, the, the minus in parentheses, the negative numbers in parentheses. So we have to do this, this right here, currency and then no symbol, no dollar sign. And then they want us to use this number. Okay. But when you click okay, it should be, it should be a uh, head now. I just add, it just basically adds a comma to separate them and, and uh, the decimal um, the numbers too. Let me click away so you can see now it looks a little better because it's uh everything's kind of like formatted in a way. So that will bring us to page 148. 
And it shows how it looks now, the style that it that it shows now. Shows the one that we we um, modified. The only thing we're gonna be missing is the um, the charts. But I'm not gonna worry about it. You're right now ready to format the the titles. We're almost done, and I want to see if we can complete it. So let's kind of like maybe not. Maybe not because it's just too much more. But let's at least format the numbers. Uh, I mean the the title. So this is what we're gonna do for the title. Look at it. I'm on page one forty eight. Says press the control home key. Uh, there. So it goes to the first title, Kaylin Kaylin's uh, ice cream shop. Select the. Uh, you say. Click the column A, heading to select the column. Okay, so that's selecting the column. It says, um, oh no, A1, I'm sorry. Emphasize, emphasize, no, no, wait a minute. Number one, press control home to select cell A1. Okay, so A1. And then click on the column A heading. There. To select the column, but we're selecting the column now. Click on the bold button. So we're bold, it's gonna bold everything. I see, notice how bold everything. Increase the font size on cell A1. So this one to 28 points. And then that one for A2 to 16 points. So first you we click on the A to bold them all. So you just click on the B, makes them all bold. And then for the the title, we're gonna select 28, size 28. For the subtitle, we're gonna select 16. Okay. So then it says to select range A1 to I2. A1 to I2. Right there. And this one, we're gonna apply a fill color to green as M4. So let's see if we have that one available. Right here is the um, fill color. Green as M2, what is this? Green as M6, M6. We don't have it, so we just, they want us to do kind of like, match the one on the screen. So this is about this one now, darker, no, is this, yeah, this one. So well, let's use a send tw darker 25%. This right here. So when I click that. That changes the background. And then the font, they want us to change it to uh, color white. So right here, look at. Select the first one, the white, to make it contrast. So now when I click it. See how it contrasts, so I click away and then you see it, see how nice. So again, we highlight A1 all the way, all the way down to I2. So which is the title and the subtitle. And instead of a uh, matching center, we're just gonna color the background. So we go to the fill and select. And the green I send six, darker 25. So when I pick, but I, any other one will do just don't worry about exactly which one it is. As long as it matches the textbook. Once I color it green, then it says to change the color of the font to select the white. The white is the first one right here. Look at white background one. And it makes the text white. So it, it con contrasts really nice. And if you look on the textbook, it, the ours looks identical to theirs. Let's click away, there it is. So how's everybody doing? We're doing okay? Just need one more step, maybe here on page 149. One more thing to do and then and then we can call it a night. Mr. Vasquez, uh -huh. I forgot. Uh, can you tell me how um the background the size of the can you tell me how big you want the where it says Kaylin ice cream and the six 
The, the Kalen ice cream is size 28, and the subtitle, the six month financial projection is 16. 28 okay. for the big one and 16 for the little one. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So let's do the, 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 this page right here, just to do the um, finish on 149, okay? So look at what we need to do. Select the range A3 to I3. So this is A3 to I3. Is that what it is? A3 to I3, okay. And then apply the heading as cell style two. So remember those are right here, cell style, heading two. Or heading number two, there it is. So just click it, there it is. Okay, so we apply the, the heading number two. So heading number two for uh, A3 to I3. The next one is uh, A6 to H6. So A6 is right here to H6 this right there. They want us to apply on this one the, um, oh wow, some more. They also want us to play the control key and also do the uh, A6 to H6, which we did already, and then A14 to H14. So this right here. And also at the same time do the uh, A16 to H16, so this one right here. So all these three are gonna have the same format. And I think it's a total format. So it goes to says, says to do the, um, apply the total cell style to the selected uh, non-adjacent um, branches. So you got A6 to H6, and then, and then, um, Oh, I'm sorry, it's from here. So it's this part right here. H6 to I6. And then the other one is um, H14 to I14. And then H16 to I16. So it's all the way down from the names also. So we're gonna apply this one, the style, the, the total style. And I'm looking at the textbooks and that's how it looks. And I click away and it looks like that exactly. Now for cell A4, which is the revenue, they want us to add a, um, a background. So we're gonna apply the same background we had before, the green. Since it's the last one we use, it, it, Excel leaves it right there. So all you have to do is just click on the little Bend bucket here for fill color. And see, it did that. And then the text, they also want us to make it white. So right here, just click it. And see, notice revenue now is green. Uh, it matches the title. And then the text is white. So we're gonna apply the background, same color, and the white text. I don't have to even get it because it's, it saves it automatically excel. So, but look at how nice it looks now. We got the, uh, the title uh, formatted, got the numbers formatted also, the uh, total formatted, the, um, it's starting to look way different than the way we started. Let me show you how when we started, how it looked, because I save it without doing anything. I was just saving it automatically. Oh, never mind. That it was gonna show me the way I had it before. It didn't. So, but yeah, but if we make so many changes. Look at how nice it looks now. And then we're gonna stop right here. This will be page one forty nine. So, if, if in case you miss anything, don't forget I'm recording this session. I'll put the um, the video tonight. I'm gonna be up watching the news anyway. Uh, it's not looking good. I think, well, if you were um, for Biden, it looks like Trump might win.
But if you're uh, going for Trump, then you know you're gonna celebrate tonight. <laughs> so, I quickly check here, see how we're doing on the say that. See this, Mr. Vasquez. I thought they said it was gonna take longer though, because they were gonna have to tally up the mail ins and the that's, if, uh, that's what I don't understand. Then, like in. Uh, and I see some of these look at when I when I when I hover it tells me that it's only forty one percent. So it's not that the votes are not total yet. No, they said it wouldn't be until December. No, I don't do a well, maybe until a couple of days. But look at in Pennsylvania, it's uh forty two percent of the votes. But Trump, as you can see, he's going way ahead. But this is just the votes of tonight, not the votes that were mail in. And supposedly most of the um Democrats mailing their, I mail in mine, so. In Ohio, Trump is way ahead, but it's only, well, this one is 86% of the vote, so it's almost about ready to take Ohio. Ohio. And Michigan is 34% uh, of the voting, but he's way ahead. So it's the votes that were counted tonight only, not the votes that were mailed. <coughs> and uh, Wisconsin is also 51%. It was 47, but it's only the 63 percent of the of the vote. So, same thing in Arizona. It's only 41 percent of the votes. But Biden is ahead there. So we don't know. In Texas, is 72 um, percent, uh, and Donald Trump is ahead 51 percent. So he's ahead on the states that he needed to win. So Ooh. that he might be reelected. Oh no! <laughs> but we'll find out. We'll find out <laughs> late, late tonight. All right, so for now, let me just um, go back here. And uh, and this is step here, we're on page 149. So if you wanna put a little marker there, so um, so we remember, I'm gonna put a little marker here, so I know, okay. And uh, well, good night, thank you very much. Good night, Mr. Vasquez. See you guys. Good night, Mr. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. We're ending in five, four, three, two, one. Good night.